This is an experiment mixing equal parts of um, <coughs> self-raising flour and PVA glue into a paste. I think it may need more, more PVA, I don't think that's enough. This might show up better on um, a darker colour card for the video. So first off I'm just going to spread a bit on, fairly thinly, and we'll <coughs> heat it up to see what happens. Seems fairly flexible. It's well stuck down. It has puffed up quite a bit. I don't know whether you can see that. I really can't see what's going on on the camera. Though. Um, all right. Now I'm going to try. some through a stencil. I'm hoping that Yeah, so I'm gonna put some through through the stencil, see how that goes. do it too thick because I want to see how it works just as a thin layer to start with. that. I'm not sure it's puffing up as, as much as the um, regular puff binder but we'll see. You can smell the flour cooking. Mm. Sounds like baking. Lovely. Well, 
it seems flexible it doesn't seem to be cracking and it's got a slightly rubbery feel to it now what I'm going to do now is put it on thick <laughs> Feels as if there's quite a lot of air in there. I'm just going to let that cool. stencil again I think Let's try heating this. as it will get. That's quite thick. It doesn't puff up in the regular way that um, um, normal puff binder does. Um, I'll do some of that in a minute and we'll see. Um, so that's the um, that's PVA with um, self-raising flour. I want to try um, want to try adding some gesso. Gesso does wonderful things if you heat it. I just want to see what's going to happen if I mix. It's starting to dry, unfortunately. That's about equal quantities of the previous mixture with gesso. So let's try. 
copies of that. And that's laid on fairly thick. This is all bubbling up like blue. It's the gesso bubbling up. That's made quite a big bubble. It's much whiter the result, of course, because of the gesso. much. Quite a nice texture. I think it's more puffy without the, the gesso but what I'd like to try is some um, just gesso and flour without glue. Puffing up that. It's not very puffy. I think the first one with the um, the glue and the flour was probably the best, not the gesso. But what I'm going to do now, get some more card out. And now I'm going to show you the real puff binder, which is this. And I got this from Amazon, and it was about six pounds, and I thought that was quite expensive. And when I opened it, the blessed thing's only half full. I think that's a bit of a swizz. It smells horrible. I think I shall have to get rid of that. I think that's um, drying up too much. 
Yes, I thought that was very expensive for what you get. And um, it's all leaked around the outside as well. I'm not terribly impressed, really. So I'm just going to spread some on in different thicknesses. And, um, and you'll see what this stuff is supposed to do. Um, with the price as it is, that's why I was so keen to develop a DIY version if possible because it is expensive. See, it's quite a creamy sort of paste. I'd love to know what it's actually made of. But they don't tell you that, of course. I tried to do some research on the internet, and there were various people doing what they call puff paint, which is coloured, um, mostly for kids, and it's look right. I didn't like the look of that at all. Okay, now I'll do a thick one. And I'll do a bit through the stencil as before. See what we shall see. I'll try with the um, top one first. Ah, oh, yes, it's popping up quite nicely and because it's thin. The little little puffs are quite small. I'm going to do the stencil because that's also quite thin. Well, that's puffing up beautifully. That's lovely. That's really very good. Now I'll do the, the medium one. Yes, it does need to be a bit thicker than the first one I did. popping up splendidly. And then the thick one, which has already started going at the edges. Now the thing about puff binder is that it seems to puff up in little little lumps rather than uniformly, which gives a really lovely effect. Now that's puffing up a lot at the edges. Oh, it was thinner, so if I just keep going, a little should puff up a bit more, I think. That's really very thick. Well, that's starting to go brown. I think I better stop that. I want to burn it. Put the top on my dresser. You can see how incredibly textured that is. isn't it? And that one's starting to go a bit brown. And the feel of it is quite, that's got air in it, I can feel that. It's quite rubbery. I love that, the stencil, that's really good and it's very flexible. Look at this. I don't think I'd want to use it as thick as that. I think the That's not really done very much. I think that's too thin. I think it needs to be sort of intermediate thickness and, and maybe put on 
so that that's coming away I think that's too thick it's very thick around the edges but that that puff binder in action now comparing the two this is much more uniform and it's also hard and how it's got I don't think the gesso one is worth doing really. I don't think that's different enough. But I think that first one with the glue and the flower is quite good. seems to be used with silk screen printing which is something I know nothing about um, and you can see from the, the stencil you can get quite clean definition and they have quite intricate designs and they do it on t-shirts and things which gives that kind of rubbery effect it's very flexible but I think not put on quite as thickly as that So there you have it, puff binder. You can of course mix it with pigments so you can make it coloured or you can paint it afterwards. And I think it will probably have, have some good uses for additional texture. Let you know how I get on.